Hello, hello. Um, how are we all tonight? On this lovely windy night, if you are here in Melbourne, the weather is actually insane. <laughs> it's very, very torrential out there. I have actually, our lights keep flickering, so I've set up candles and things so that if the lights do go out, that um, you can at least still see me. I'm preparing for the electricity to um, cark it. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you are on live, please say hello. Make sure that you uh, make yourself known. If you watch this on replay later, please let me know that you're jumping on replay um, and say hi. It's always better if we can have, you know, know who's been here and have the collective energy. Uh, my name is June. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Hi, Janine. So nice to see you on. Uh, this is my group, the Enchantress Circle, and um, it is full of other amazing, beautiful spiritual mentors who all come together and help to create this space, as well as all of you lovely people who are in it. The people that are in here um, are just amazing, and honestly, the power that we have in here is crazy and the knowledge. So it's really, really cool. Oh, hello, Kerry and Carly. Carly, I, it's so cool. I haven't seen you on actual live <laughs> besides the one that we did together um, on here. So that's really nice. Oh, hi, Tracy. So nice to see you on as well. All these beautiful, amazing people. Tracy Lee from Dragonfly Angels. Um, tonight, uh, we're going to be talking about your psychic senses or your clear senses um, is another thing that they've been called. Um, if, by the way, before we get started, uh, you want to find me, you can find me at um, Community Collabs with June Mac on Facebook if you aren't already following me, or on Instagram, community underscore collabs. Oh, that's right, Carly, usually working, so you miss out on the Woo Woo Wednesdays. Um, oh, that's so cool. I hope you're enjoying your time off. Hi, Gita. So nice to see you on too. Um, what I do is I am a small business intuitive mentor. I've actually, I have um, also collaborate with other soul-led women in business, so create communities like this amazing community that you're in. Um, another one on its way, <laughs> which I'll talk about later. Um, programs, I create mainly programs for um, soul-led women in business and product. So as of, you know, about a week or so ago, created uh, a beautiful, our first beautiful collaboration product with Carly, who's on from down Evelyn Lane. Um, beautiful collaboration candles. I have one here in case the power goes out. We only have three left from this first pour um, and I haven't even posted about them for quite a while because I was so tired from when they first were released and getting used to shipping them out and things like that. So thank you for everyone who has purchased one. Um, Kerry, I think I saw you one before um, who purchased one. So thank you so much. Um, but tonight the live was actually requested from Philippa to speak about, uh, she wanted to know about psychic senses or your clear senses. And this is something that you could say that I am at a apprentice or at a beginner's level at. And, oh, Philippa, you're on, I <laughs> just saw your little love heart, uh, which is a really cool subject actually um, to ask for. So I was kind of excited when I saw it, but then, you know, there are amazing people in here like um, Tracy or Kasia Burke, or Amanda Nicole, who I know know a lot about this subject. <laughs> oh, thank you, Gary. Um, you love your candle. Uh, but I, I was thinking to myself, look, you just learnt this information. You can't keep asking. Literally, Kasha and Tracy have just done lives in here. Amanda is hopefully doing one towards the end of the month, maybe early um, July. I haven't scheduled it in yet, but um, about increasing your intuition, so that should be interesting. And I sort of thought, you know what, you just learnt this stuff. This is stuff that you've been working on every day. Oh, hi, Shelly. So nice to see you on. You can talk about this. Get over your, you know, get over your fear and get out there. And um, even though I am, you know, at somewhat of a... Oh, look, I've always been spiritual, but I've really only really come out of the spiritual closet probably last year. So that, I, and talking about it opening last year, and I, boy, am I out. <laughs> But uh, that's what I mean by in regards to, I guess, new or a beginner's level. But there are people, you know, that are still somewhat just one step behind. So I can 
hopefully still teach you something that you don't know yet. So if you are after an advanced um, <laughs> Claire Senses video, maybe to, or turn me off <laughs> and watch later. But um, if you feel like there's anyone else that might you know, be interested in this type of thing, hi Janine, so lovely to see you on tonight too. Uh, thank you so much for your advice today. Feel free to invite them into the Enchanted Circle. They, this will be available on replay. If you have to go, this will be available on replay as well. So what I'm going over tonight um, is going to be, I guess, a basic idea um, or touch on your psychic senses. Uh, stuff that I've learned from, I look, I did a an intuition or psychic workshop with Lindy Jewell, who's actually not in this group, but it was amazing. I should probably ask her if she would like to come in because she would have some great uh, insight to add in here. Um, stuff that I learned from Kasia Burke, from um, Maria Portes, for anyone that follows her, and obviously like podcasts and things like, like that, and things that I work on every day. So if we want to jump straight into it, I guess the easiest way to start talking about it is that we all have our human physical senses. So you've got your five senses, um, your touch, taste, smell, your sight, your hearing, and these are senses that we are most of us are born with them all and from the beginning when we're born we're always encouraged to um, develop these actual senses and you know right from the beginning they check they check with these senses our sight our hearing our touch you know you can do things like put your finger in the palm of a baby's hand and they have that that, that reflex which is all automatic and stuff that we are taught to develop over you know the coming years right from being a baby to being a child when you're at school and preschool you're learning how to develop these senses but you're also born with your psychic senses and I guess so some people say there's only four some people say that there's six psychic senses or your clairs and there are some people that say that there's eight so <laughs> I'm I'm going to name what eight of them are and in case you hear those words, at least you know what they're talking about. Although it took me a little while to start to remember all of these because yeah, there are some strange words for the, for the psychic senses. But um, I'll mainly be probably talking about the main four. Oh, hi, Kasha, so nice to see you on. Yes, Tracy, so you say eight as well. So some people say there's only six, some people say there's only four, but I will name the eight and yeah, believe or just take on what you want to what you want to so we've all got those um physical senses that we're born with but then there's our you know psychic senses which we are also born with which i guess they're kind of shut down but i'll talk about that in a second so the the senses that you've got are so i'm going to actually put a little um a little instagram post graphic in the group to help you and you can save it to your phone if you like if you need some help in remembering them all because it took me a little while a few lives a few podcasts uh to listen to to actually remember them all so there's clairvoyance which is your uh psychic sense of seeing there is your clairaudience which is your psychic sense of hearing and i'll go over each one of these in a little bit more detail in a second um, clairsentience, which is your um, psychic sense of clear feeling or being able to sense something, so recognizing or feeling somebody else's feelings, or you know, when you sense that somebody is, you know, not telling you fibs or porcupines, but you know, you can tell sometimes when somebody's lying. Um, this is clairsentience. If they, if so, you feel that something is wrong, it's a feeling that you get. Um, sometimes when someone is in emotional pain, you know, you can feel it. I sometimes have felt, you know, when my mum's something bad has happened overseas and I kind of feel it before she's even told me that anything's wrong. I know something's wrong. And I'm sure all of you have had, you know, experiences like this. I'd love to hear um, about them if you want to share. Um, so there's clear cognizance, which is that psychic sense of knowing or clear knowing. And this, the clairsentience and claircognizance kind of come in together in a similar way. Oh, you get that one as well, Kylie. That's amazing. That's so cool. So we all have, um, yeah, these psychic senses and depending on who you are, some of them are stronger than others, uh, but you can develop all of them and you might have some that you feel that you don't get, um, but you can help to 
to develop them all and we'll talk I'll talk about that in a moment as well so with the clear cognizance that you know like that that sense of knowing that you might have so for example you might you know I, I, there's been times where you know someone's been playing like baseball or something and you have I've had like this clear feeling that someone is going to let go of that bat and it's going to go flying in a second and then it actually happens so just that knowing that you have um knowing sometimes if you're in a bad situation and you need to get out of there that's clear cognizance I used to know when my babies were crying when they weren't with me that's crazy Philippa that's amazing yeah that's a really strong that's a really strong um clear sentience or clear cognizance so they kind of go together those two uh, I feel like anyway, and a lot of the exercises to help develop your clear cognizance or clear sentience, um, uh, the exercises are for the both of them or to help to develop the both of them. There is clear aliens. I think that's how you say it, aliens, which is uh, the psychic sense of smelling. So this is something that I personally have not experienced. I feel like I have uh, experienced the rest of them, but um, smelling is something that I haven't experienced. I know that there's probably a few of you in here that have, you know, might smell someone that's passed over's perfume and they know that they're around or their, their particular smell. That's something that I personally have never experienced myself. And there's Claire Gustin's which is the psychic sense of taste. So that again is something that I have not um, experienced myself and I'm pretty sure they are the two rarer, rarer of the psychic senses, which is the smell and taste. So amazing if you've got them. Um, Shelly says, when someone calls and you know who's going to be before they answer, yes, or you're thinking about someone and then they call. Uh, Tracy, so you can smell perfume and smoke. I knew you would be one of them <laughs> that has experienced uh, the Claire Aliens or the Claire Gustans. There's also, um, so that's the six. I always forget what the smell one is called. You know how I remember it, Kasha? And actually it was Wendy Jasper who helped me um, remember it. She said she thinks of aliens. So <laughs> when she thinks of Claire, uh, Claire aliens, so smell. So whenever I think about a nose now, I think about aliens and Claire aliens. So that's how, <laughs> that's how I remember it. So that was thanks to Wendy, who's actually not in this group, but thank you, Wendy, but I'll, I'll tell her next time. There's clear empathy as well. So these are the seven and the eight, which, which not everyone throws in there. Clear empathy is um, the clear sense of emotional feeling somebody else's emotions, which I personally think, I think this is why they aren't always thrown in there, um, sort of relates to the clear sentience or clear cognizance, which, yeah, emotions, I guess you can sense those as well. So that kind of throws in there. And there's also uh, clear tangency, and I remember that because of it's got a T in it, tangency for, t um, for touch. So that is like when you feel someone physically, which again could be classed as clairsentience because you are sensing that, like someone touching you or putting their, their hand on your shoulder, um, things like that. Uh, yes, I remember now. Yeah, with the aliens. <laughs> So what, I guess, you know, if you want to share what psychic senses do you feel that you have, which psychic senses do you feel are your strongest? Uh, for me, it's probably definitely clairvoyance and clairaudience and then clairsentience and claircognizance. Um, yeah, so all of them really, besides the taste and the smell, I've never actually experienced. Hi, Louise. Louise, so nice to see you on. Oh, Annie gets that touch. Yeah, gets the touch one. I have felt, you know, things like hands on my shoulders and things like that, um, weight on the bed. But, yeah, not usually. It's a pretty rare one. Things like tingles, which I guess would be included in that. Um, yeah, things like that is sort of what I have had as well. So... Um, in regards to all of those, so these are things, oh, hi, Helen, that you can, you can help to develop these psychic senses. And when we are younger, you probably, most of you have, have noticed if you've got children before, you know, we've had the chance to shut down these psychic senses, they're very strong in children because it hasn't been fully shut down yet. But, you know, you might've had, like, I had an imaginary friend, for example, when, I was a kid and now that I think back to it, you know, like my mum thought I was going crazy. She actually got really worried because it was before my younger sister was born and she was like, hurry up to my dad. We need to have another sibling because, you know, June's so lonely <laughs> that she's imagining someone else. 
But now that I think back to it, I think it was like a little spirit that was in the house. And, you know, things like that get shut down. So when you're a child and you say there's somebody here or I saw somebody or I felt somebody or someone said this to me, you know, that gets shut down. So those um, psychic senses get shut down by most of the time when you're, when you're younger. So they usually say by the time you're seven, um, a lot of them have disappeared. But, you know, with my oldest daughter, for example, she has her whole life since she could start speaking I'm pretty sure is pretty in tune. And many of you, as I've seen at stories in these groups, have got children whose um, you know gifts are very obvious. And I've been trying my best to try and encourage those rather than to shut them down because I think it would be amazing um, if she could continually develop these senses. Um, I'm just having a look at these comments here. I'm pretty sure I have four. Sentience, cognizance, empathy, and the touch one. Yeah, I reckon you, if you've got, yeah, if you've got sentience, yeah, you've got cognizance. Clairvoyance, um, clairaudience are usually the most um, common. Um, and Carly's got touch, that's amazing. Hands on shoulders, on top of the head, that's tingles in hands. That's crazy, Carly. Um, I swear you're a healer though, that you haven't discovered yet, which might be why you get the tingles in the hands all the time. What would gut feeling intuition? Yes, clairsentience or claircognizance, definitely, Kylie. Um, so for a lot of people, that's very strong. LJ had Lupi and Tiana. No reason she would have thought of those names. Exactly. So my imaginary friend was called Emily. So that's, yeah, so totally little spirits or little friends that we've got. Um, Helen says, my mum still has recordings of me talking to my spirit friend as a child. See, it's crazy, isn't it? And then um, we have these memories or I have these memories of, you know, things like that happening and, you know, parents getting worried that we need psychiatric <laughs> help. But we can reawaken these senses. You can strengthen them, strengthen them and bring them back. Um, Helen, my Miss Four has been telling us the same story since she was two to three of her life as a soldier. That is amazing, Helen. I, have you shared that in here before? Because I feel like that sounds familiar, but that is so crazy. That's, yeah, that's really amazing. Um, so I guess I can go through um, each one of them now with a little bit more detail. I don't want to... Um, yeah, go into great detail because there are a lot of them and we're going to be here for a long time if I go through each one of them in great detail. But I guess in regards to exercises of how we can strengthen them, probably the main four um, we can yep, talk about. And Carly says, you've had a few people say that before, especially woo-woo clients who I've given facials to. Oh, about healing, Carly. Yeah, I, I, totally, I totally think so. We need to do this Reiki class. We've, me and Carly have been talking about doing... Um, Reiki together and I would love to actually do that once we're out of once we're out of lockdown um so okay so I guess we all have them in varying de in varying degrees these senses and the more that we um the more that we we work in them and work on developing them it's like a muscle the more that they are flexed and used the stronger that they get and um with me, for example, I guess how the exercises work is they sort of they sort of connect in with your physical senses, but um, when we develop our physical senses, it's kind of like they're linked together and our psychic senses um, develop as well. So it's not as hard as what like you think it might be. So for example, like when you have your sacred space or your goddess space, you might light candles and have you know crystals and oils, and that is. Um, using your human senses so smell you know with the oils and the candles um you might put on you know nice binarial beats or something um that is you know for your sound or your your, your hearing um candles you know are physically appealing to look at so those things raise your vibration and help you to connect so that is i guess when you're working on your human senses it helps with your psychic senses or to develop them as well um, and you can develop your senses, uh, your psychic senses drastically. You can improve them really quickly. So um, I was saying, for example, the strongest one that I have is probably clairvoyance, which is um, what a lot of, um, I guess, you can see actual, a lots of psychics or people that see the future or intuitives or mediums have. And you don't necessarily see things with your human eyes. That apparently is quite rare. Um, I have 
seen things with my human eyes before but a lot of the time it's with your third eye which if you don't know about um someone asked me what, th what your third eye was the other day when i was talking about it so i'm not going to presume that just everyone um, knows what it is so your third eye is the chakra that is here and it's kind of like the easiest way for me to explain it seeing with your third eye is like when you see things in your imagination so when you're imagining something and you kind of see it inside your head that's how i would best um explain seeing things with your third eye and so for example when i am meditating i have you know seen visions and things with my third eye the reason why i know it's with my third eye sometimes i've had my eyes open which is totally freaky when i think about it <laughs> but i've been starting you know to see visions and things during meditation things like past lives during mirror work which kasha burke ta uh, taught me how to do so seeing past lives flash before my eyes and the more that i have been doing these exercises and practicing you know like meditation and mirror work the longer I've been able to hold these visions um, sometimes with my actual human eyes but the only time at the moment I've been able to see visions with my actual human eyes is in between that asleep and awake you know state that you're in that I guess your brain is in that theta state which is that deep sort of meditation and seeing visions of you know like um, they usually when you get uh, images from your guides they're usually kind of in a metaphor or like in a symbol. It's not actually in a way that a normal person would speak to you or the way you would say some, I mean, for me anyway, I guess for everyone it's different. And I've started to learn symbols or um, the way that they speak and what they actually mean. Um, so for example, I had a dream a few months ago um, I was asking, you know, like, what am I here to do? Asking my guides, you know, setting that intention before going to sleep. What am I here to do when I was, you know, in one of my bear modes, feeling nice and lost? And um, one of the visions that I got was a bunch of women with a compass um, in front of it. And now that I've started to know, you know, my, these metaphors or the symbols that they use a little bit more, the way that I interpreted it was... Um, helping to show women the way, like the compass and the women. So I haven't told anyone that before, so that's a little bit of a vulnerable share. Um, but how you can help to um, build or to develop your, your third eye. Um, things like, so everyday things like reading books, can help because you're using your imagination you're picturing things there are exercises that you can do so there's an exercise that actually Kasha Burke uh, taught me in Liberato or taught us in Liberato which was with a deck of cards and you can imagine or think about what's on the other side of the deck of cards so obviously hold it up with the back to you and imagine what's on the other side so like a black um, ace of spades or maybe seeing if you get the color right and then going for the number. And it's not really about um, getting the what it is on the other side correct. That's not what the exercise is about. It's about visualizing it in your mind. Another exercise you can use cards, you can use, if you don't like to use like a normal deck of cards, you can use your tarot cards. If you know that quite well, you can use your, your oracle cards if you know what might be on the other side. Something that, um, so the way that I've started I've tried to incorporate a lot of these exercises for your clear senses into my everyday life. Um, and I honestly feel like they are working because, for example, with my clairvoyance, um, when I first started meditation, I would just see little flickers of things. And now I can set the intention of what I would like, you know, guidance on or who I would like to read, for example. And... Um, I can hold the images for a lot longer. It will play out like a movie or things will continually come through. Also in between that asleep and awake section, oh, time, you know, in the middle of the night when I do actually see full visions, like an actual object maybe in front of me, um, I can stare at it for longer and keep blinking and keep blinking before it actually fades away. It takes longer for it to disappear. So I feel like it's definitely working. So with the cards exercise this is my own version i have these near the door so uno <laughs> cards and i guess you can make up whatever type of exercise that you like whatever appeals to you a lot of people don't like to get things wrong so some people um 
you know, they not they don't like these exercises. So I'll name an, another couple. But so for example, if I'm gonna hold, this is what I a quick way that I love doing it with Uno is holding the card this way and guessing what color is on the other side. So obviously I can see that, which I didn't think through. But <laughs> for example, I'd hold it this way and go like, you know, red or yellow. So I'll try and say it before I hold it up. Green. See, as you can see, I absolutely suck. Blue. Oh, that one I got right. Um, yellow. So just doing that um, for like five minutes at the front door when I come in the door is um, one of the exercises that you can do to help with your clairvoyance. And it's just about imagining the image in your head and not about whether you're actually getting it right or wrong. So there's that one. There's another exercise um, that you can do, which is one of, one of my favorite ones that I personally like doing as well, is imagining a whiteboard or a chalkboard and imagine writing the number one on it and then underneath writing the number two, clearly holding that vision of the number one, then writing the number two and clearly holding the vision of the number two and then you're writing the number three. You can, I even change the colors of what whiteboard marker I'm using in my head as I go along and you can just count up, um, do that in your head or visualize it up to 10 or 20. You can either have your eyes closed or if you're getting really good at it, you can do it with your eyes open. So I have been doing that while driving, um, while sitting at the doctor's office, like an appointment with my dad or something, I'll just be sitting there imagining drawing on my whiteboard. Um, there's also another exercise which uh, Kasha taught us in Liberato, which was um, with the balloons or different helium balloons that you're holding the seven, you know, colors of the chakras and pulling one out, imagining what color it is. So you can see a green balloon, for example, letting it go and watching it like fly away right into the distance until you can only just see it and then you pull the next color out and do that up until um, you finished with those seven colored balloons so they are my favorite ones there are actually lots if none of those appeal to you you can look up more um as well too but really they're super easy and you can do them anywhere into in the shower even um, you know, I might be letting go of my balloons <laughs> in my head while I'm showering um, or doing the um, the one with the whiteboard as well. So they're my, my favorite. They're the ones that I like to do, but there are many more. And just doing those, you know, like for a couple of minutes every day really can help with your actual, with your clairvoyance or your psychic sense of seeing. And I definitely feel like that that personally has been working for me and I'm a little bit biased because that, that is my favorite one so they're probably the exercises that I do the most but there's also clear audience so with your psychic sense of hearing so with clear audience I didn't actually understand this when I first um learned about or heard about clear audience I always thought that clear audience was that you physically had to hear the sound with your human ear and I thought wow that's like a really crazy rare thing which um, it has happened to me a couple of times again in between that asleep and awake section uh, where someone has you know said my name or I said a word or something that I hear often which to me I now have inter interpreted that is when they're telling me to take a big step or a big leap so I might be sitting on an idea and you know sitting on it and sitting on it as we do and in my sleep i will hear someone knocking at the door so like so loud and it wakes me up and i've now come to far, uh, come to realize that this has been happening to me for years that when i hear that sound that's like my symbol for come on <laughs> like open the door like get moving take your step and then i'm like okay okay and i usually you know do it and take their advice so that's how i've interpreted that um but usually clear audience is not necessarily hearing always with your human ears it can be clear audience is also classed as for those of you that follow carly and marie you might have heard of um what she would call like a download so when you're walking along and these ideas start coming through and you're um, you're, you're receiving information or a download. There's this idea dropping into your mind and this happens to me a lot of the time in regards to business ideas. People, you know, some people say like, where do you get these you know, crazy ideas for collaborations from? 
or what made you think of this? And honestly, a lot of the time I feel like it's not me. I honestly feel like these are ideas that are fed to me or given to me via, you know, your clear audience, which is really just like um, getting an idea dropping into your mind that is not necessarily something that you, you know, that you, how did I think of that? You didn't necessarily think of that. It's like an idea that's been given to you, you know, by your guides or, you know, God or whoever it is that you want to believe in. Um, and sometimes it's in your own voice, in your own head. It's just like thoughts, but they are ideas coming in. And, you know, often when you have ideas for, you know, for me, for business, for example, I have so many that I need to like get them out onto paper. And then once I've done that and they're out of my head, they're onto paper, there's more room in my head for more to drop in. And that is actually classes, clear audience. I honestly thought that clear audience, I thought I didn't have it because it's not very often that I would hear actual sounds with my ears. Um, so sometimes it's like, maybe you might hear some, it might be like somebody else's voice in your mind. Often it's your own voice, or maybe it's just actual thoughts that have just dropped in. That is clear audience. Um, ways that you can help to develop this. Um, something that has helped me with mine is automatic writing, which um, Amanda Nicole, who's not on, but she's a big fan of automatic writing. Oh, Joanne, mine is always in songs. That's amazing. That has happened to me in the middle of the night where a song has popped into my head and kept playing as well. But yeah, that's really cool. Um, yeah, that's really cool that it's in, that it's in songs. So that's, that's clear audience. So that is something that I didn't realize until I started looking or learning a little bit more deeper into it. But for me, clear audience, what has helped with my clear audience is meditating, getting in myself into that theta state and then journaling. And it's when you hear the, you know, the ideas or the voice, well, I don't want to say voices because it makes you sound like you know, um, a crazy person, but you get the ideas and you can put them onto paper. And it's great to put them onto paper because once those ideas come in, they very quickly go. Have you ever thought, you know, I'm going to um, do a live or I'm going to have this conf uh, conversation with someone and this amazing idea pops into your head and then you don't write it down and all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, it's gone. Like, where did it go? So writing it down straight away, that has helped with my clear audience. Um, so you kind of hear it or you receive it in your head and then you write it down as soon as you can. Um, often with automatic writing, it's really strange when you come back and you read over it because it's almost like you don't remember writing a lot of that information. You think, whoa, like, where did that even come from? That doesn't even sound like how I would speak. And sometimes you're writing and it's not even, it doesn't even look like you're writing sometimes as well. Um, when you are developing your clear audience, um, it can sometimes feel like uh, when it's becoming more in tune, a slight pain or like a pinprick or a needle, <laughs> doesn't sound very nice, but going into your eardrum. So when you become a little bit better at it, um, but attuning, I guess, to physical sounds also makes it easier for you to attune into the sounds, you know, from the spirit world. So other ways that you can help with your clear audience, I'll just have a look at these comments before I go on to that. Remind me to tell you my song story from the other days, from my day spa days. I will definitely <laughs> grab that from me. Thanks, Carly. I would love to hear that story. Um, or you can tell us in here. It is Woo Woo Wednesday. You can share it um, in the group. Um, so one of the exercises in regards to clear audience, another one is, uh, I don't know if um, this was from you, Kasha, or if I just made up the Nature Symphony, or if it was from Lindy Jewell um, from her intuition workshop. Nature Symphony is basically where you sit outside, or you go into lots of different. Outside is probably the best place, but you can go into lots of different scenarios, so you hear different sounds, and you sit there. You might want to close your eyes. You might want to have your eyes open. However, you best operate and listen to the sounds that are around you and tune in to first what you hear maybe on the surface sounds so you might hear you know birds um, you might hear winds and then go deeper into the sounds and kind of um, itemize them out as you go you might hear then once you tune in a little bit deeper you might hear cars you know backfiring in the distance you might hear a chainsaw somewhere else you might hear a dog barking, you know, really far away. 
and just sit there and kind of tune into all the different sounds one at a time and hone in on the particular sounds and go in deeper, come back out. And when it was summertime, that was one of them that I used to like doing. Nature Symphony, you can also do it in different locations so you get a whole lot range of different sounds. Inside, you know, you might just be like TV sounds, your kid running around crazy. Um, those types of things. Uh, you can also do it with classical music. So sitting there and, well you don't have to do classical music I suppose. If you're not into classical music, you can try a different um, instrumental, but classical music you can sit there and listen to it and then tune into one instrument at a time. So you might just follow the you know clarinet for a little while and then tune out of that and then tune into the violin and then tune out of that and then tune into the piano for me who is not very musical that was a bit hard i did try doing that while waiting for my dad once at one of our his appointments in the doctor's office and i was like i don't even know what's what because i'm not an extremely musical person so the nature symphony works a little bit better for me but louise if you're still on i know definitely you'd probably be really good at the classical music um, exercise for your claire audience um michelle says i get downloads when i'm on my morning walks yes um I nearly brought you on screen, Michelle. It'd be like Tracy the other night when she came on in a um, in a dressing gown. It's a voice in my head, but no emotion in it. Yes, I actually read that too. So I can't see the rest of your comment, which is super annoying. Um, I'll open it later on. You often wonder who. That's all I can get. Um, but I did actually read that it's um, usually in a very calm, stated. Um, calm, stated, simple voice, yeah, when the downloads come through. And that is another way that definitely you said going on morning walks that you can get those clear audience messages coming through is just doing things that like if you, some people don't like meditation, some people don't like journaling, they can't sit there and physically, physically sit still, going outside and getting in nature, just having time to quieten your mind gives you um, time for these messages to come through as well. And that's another thing that I do when I need to get some energy or move some energy around as well. I'll go on like walks around the lake and that's often where a lot of really good ideas start dropping in and I usually have my phone with me and start audioing them so I can remember them. Um, in the shower, I usually get a lot, even while driving, sometimes just while doing the dishes, just where you have those quiet sort of meditative state. Is that a word? Meditative? State. Um, you know, a state of mind that you're in where you're not really necessarily, you know, your mind has time to quieten and that's time a time when you can get those messages or your clear audience to start working in for those ideas to drop in. So there they are a few exercises to develop your clear audience. And I just have got clear sentience and clear cognizance left. And then um, I will leave that <laughs> for tonight because there's a lot of information here and then I'll upload the um, little image or graphic that I've got to help you guys remember them all because they are a lot. Uh, Kerry says, not sure if it's the same, but I always hear the songs that was played at my sister's funeral. Oh, in very important time. Absolutely, I think that's that's definitely the same. That's definitely clear audience. That could be the way that she's like getting, um, you know, a message across to you. Um, I can't open the rest of that message. I'm so sorry, Kerry, but 100%, I definitely think that is clear audience. That's Definitely, if you're hearing that, um, that's like her sending, that's her way of sending um, messages to you. And that's what I found um, when people that have passed away come to me in dreams. It's never, it's not very often where we're just sitting there and actually speaking or just actually hearing them talk. A lot of the time, the way that they come across with their messages is very different. It might just be a feeling. It might just be a one line that you, that I see like a sentence um, they might show me in symbol. So for example, um, recently one of my friend's sisters who's passed away, um, I don't think she's on now, but her sister came through and showed me her hair was dyed blonde and then her younger sister with um, a boy. So it was her showing me blonde hair and a boy. And I didn't know what that was. She was just going like this with her hair and it changed from black to blonde. And I contacted my friend and said, your sister's just had a, you know, your sister's just come through. She's showing me blonde hair and your younger sister with a boy. Don't know what that means. She was like, I have no idea. 
no idea what that means. And then it came up about a week later that her younger sister, who I dreamt about, had come home with a boy who had very blonde dyed hair. Um, so yeah, and she was super happy, a boyfriend, a new boyfriend um, on the block. So that was really cool. And um, yeah, interesting the way in mes the way mes messages come through sometimes. Sorry, completely gotten off track. So Claire Sentience and Claire Cognizance. So Claire Sentience um, is recognizing or sensing um, feelings, like if you sense that somebody else is upset or when someone tells you maybe they're speaking to you about troubles that they have and you actually physically feel it. I don't, something that's something that happens to me and um, sometimes why I feel like um, I can feel, really feel the pity or not the pity, but I can really, em, em, um, what's the word? Emphasize or I can really empathically feel, you know, the hurt that someone is going through because sometimes you physically feel it. Um, it might be when you are clear sentences, you might look at a photo um, of somebody and feel it like that intuition gut feeling. So if Kylie's still on, she was asking about that before, um, that maybe there's something not right with this person. So, or that, that sense of that person is hiding something that maybe you're looking at a photo or maybe someone that you meet and it comes through as like a feeling. Clear cognizance comes through as like a knowing rather than a feeling. You know that, you know that that person is hiding something. You don't physically feel it, but you know it. Um, yeah, you don't necessarily feel it. It's more just like a knowing. You might be able to with clear sentience. I think um, there's some people that feel physical pains as well. So I, this is something that I've never experienced, but I definitely know healers. Um, when there's something wrong with someone that they're uh, working on, they can feel that physical pain, like a neck. They know that they're having issues with their neck. So I know Jo um, Mathers, who's not on tonight, but she's one of the um, mentors, spiritual mentors in this group. And she can physically feel the pain of somebody else when they come in. She knows what's wrong with them a lot of the time just by actually feeling it. Clear sentence is that gut instinct um, or being able to read the emotions really of others without really knowing how. Have you ever sort of like, so this is a good example, walked into a room and just sensed like the, the collective energy in the room, that would be, you know, your clear sentience as well. So when you walk in and everyone looks at you and you think, oh, they're about to tell me something bad, like something bad has just happened. Or when you walk into a room and you're like, I think everyone was just talking about me. <laughs> That's clear sentience. So, um, Claire Cognizance, uh, there's been like times when, you know, I've been intuitively tuning into one of my one-on-one, -on -one, you know, mentoring clients and I just know that this person has had issues with their parents, like their parents are narcissistic. Yes, yeah, scary. <laughs> um, or that they've got a child that's, you know, sensitive. You just know that those things. So again, in keeping with the theme of working in these um, exercises into everyday life, so something that um, actually Kasha has brought into the group, she's posted photos in before, which is a really good exercise to develop your clear cognizance and clear sentience. And you tune into the photo and see what you feel or know comes up for you. And that's a really good way to do it. So a way that I've incorporated that into everyday life is I embarrassingly love trashy ma magazines. And um, when I'm flicking through them, if I come across a celebrity that I don't actually know who it is, I'll look at the photo and try and tune into the photo and just try and um, imagine or feel um, into this person and into their story or who they are and then I like to read the caption underneath <laughs> about this person or Google them and look it up and actually find out if I'm correct and then you'll actually be really surprised how often you know your, your gut feelings are right there's actually a video in here so if that Kasha book um, popped in on reading photos so if you go into the guides and going to Kasha Burke, I filed under there the little video that she did on tuning into photos. So that's a really cool one for your clear cognizance or clear sentience. Another one that you can do is with objects. So if you have friends that you know are into this type of thing, you can you can play it with your friends or get go over to their house when you're at their house or something and hold on to an object and try and guess you don't know obviously where it's come from guess where it's come from guess who gave it to them guess whether they bought it guess if it's old or if it's new if it's antique 
and you can do it with objects. So it's actually called something. If someone's on and actually knows what it's called when you do it with objects, let me know because I've forgotten what it's called when there's, you've probably seen, has anyone ever watched Hollywood Medium? Um, and how he can take an object and tune into the person that's passed away by holding onto the object. I can't remember what the actual word is, but that's one way to practice it as well. You can get out old photos. Um, you can also help to develop it just by following your intuition. So that gut feeling, um, that strong gut feeling that you get, you can start something like an in intuitive um, diary, which personally, um, that's not something that I would love to do, but there are people out there that love to write. I love to write things down, but for some reason, it just doesn't appeal to me. But I know that there are people that love to do this, is that throughout the day, they'll note every time they have a gut feeling about something, and whether it turned out to be right or wrong. And then when you start noticing how much out of the time, how much out of the things that you write down actually turned out to be correct, sometimes you don't follow your gut feeling and sometimes you ignore them and it doesn't work out for you and you don't follow those gut feelings, you'll actually be really surprised at how, and start to notice more and be able to use your, and trust your gut feelings more. So that's another um, good exercise for clear cognizance or clear sentience. Um, but honestly, so that's kind of like the exercises for the main four. There, I, there is probably most definitely exercises for your clear gusto and your clear aliens. But um, I don't know if anyone, does anyone want to develop their, their sense of smell and um, taste? I guess you could do this exactly the same thing, eating food and then like picking out the flavors. That probably would help with your clear, <laughs> clear gusto. And same thing with your sense of smell. I guess you could get a whole you know, bunch of oils and guess what is what and pick them out and tune into each one. That could probably help with that. Um, Carly says, I say this to my husband all the time. I call them my predictions, a gut feeling of something that is going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. And now you know what it's actually, um, called and we're all usually really good at this. And in regards to, um, developing our psychic senses, one of my biggest blocks and blocks that I feel like a lot of other people probably have is the biggest issue that can help you if you can get over it to actually move quicker is that issue of trust is trusting yourself and actually believing that what is happening to you or what you are feeling what you are seeing is real and that is probably had been still i'd about to say in the past but i'm definitely getting better one of my biggest blocks is actually just um trusting that it's really happening so i still sometimes i still am like is this actually real? Am I actually seeing these things? Is the things that I'm getting right about other people or the, you know, passed over people that are talking to me, is this, you know, actually real? So believing in yourself, trusting in yourself, surrendering that to the messages that are coming through and just 100% not questioning them and believing that what is happening is real. That is probably the number one thing that you need to have to be able to develop them quicker. Hi, Amanda, I spoke about you earlier. Yes, trust is just that belief in yourself and belief in your guides and whoever it is that is sending you these messages that it is actually happening. Um, ways to develop um, or to help you with, or, or to help you trust yourself more that I have found things that help me is using divination tools. So I love using cards, um, oracle or tarot cards. I love using um, pendulum, but there are many other divination tools that you can use because you can physically see, and this helps us without a human I, this helps our human feel better, which you don't need, but you know, if you're just starting out, it helps you physically see that what your intuition is telling you is actually real. So when I've been doing readings for um, other people, I tune in first and then I have these gut feelings and then I usually pull the cards afterwards, which normally it 100% just confirms everything that I just had that intuitive feeling about, but... Um, was too afraid, you know, to believe in myself or trust myself that what I'm feeling is real. And seeing it in the actual cards um, really helps you to actually be like, I this is real. I can trust myself. I do have these gifts, and it helps that to become stronger. The more that you trust, 
the stronger it becomes. Um, Amanda, I made it on arrival. That is totally fine, Amanda. You'll have to rewatch because I did mention you and about your journaling um, <laughs> in here. Kelly says, my teenage boys hate the fact that I just know when something is going on with them or when they're not being completely honest, I'm presuming you're saying, because my phone is playing funny buggers and not letting me open that up. Yes, that is so funny. They can't get stuff past you, <laughs> can they, Kelly? And they're like, how do you know? My youngest daughter says that to me all the time. How do you know I'm lying? Because when she lies, she does the same thing her dad does. They leave their mouth open like that after they tell a fib. That's how I know, but I don't tell her that. Otherwise, she'll stop doing it and shut her mouth. Um, yes, also for me... Um, the pendulum really helps because it can give you a straight yes or no answer. So for those of you that know how to use a pendulum, that helps. Um, but the more that you trust, the more that you say things, write them down when they come through so you remember, the more that you acknowledge that you are right and have gratitude for the messages that are coming through, the more they will come and the more they will, they will follow or the more they'll flow. Just like, you know, flexing that psychic muscle, making it stronger, asking for signs if you want them. And then when you receive them, because a lot of people don't realize they can ask. One of my, you know, best friends, she's, her dad's passed away, my actual best friend, and um, her dad's passed away and she, you know, says, look, I really want to receive messages from him, but I don't see anything. I said, have you actually asked? And, you know, she's asked and then signs of a following signs are coming through um and just note that you've received that message you know either in your head you know thank you i got that i understand or you know writing it down so that they know you've definitely got that message and it and being just super grateful i really feel like helps um them continue to give you these messages and it's not necessarily because being grateful because they don't have an ego you know, your guides or whoever it is. It's more just the energy I feel like that your gratitude gives off. It makes them excited. They're like, she's getting it or he's getting it. They're understanding. They're getting what, what I'm giving them. So I'm going to give them more. So you probably have, you know, those friends that don't believe in this stuff and rah, rah, rah. And that's totally fine. Um, not here to, to convince anyone, but they're not using their, um, they're not, when they do receive messages, they're ignoring it or they're just blowing it off um, and they're not putting out that grateful energy and, and eventually like you know you guys can try and try and try and then it kind of slows down and stops if they're not getting anything in return so yes super grateful energy so putting out that um, you know gratefulness if you watch um, Lindy Jewell who I mentioned before when she's doing her readings online if you've ever had a reading with her just for an example she literally talks to herself and says thank you every time a message just comes through um, she says yep thank you like every time she gets messages uh, yes so that's pretty much it that's all I had to say it's gone for oh my gosh an hour sorry guys nearly an hour 55 minutes if you have any questions please feel free to chuck them in the comments if I don't know the answer obviously there are 50,000 amazing wonderful women in here that yeah she does Amanda, that I can um, you know throw the questions at if you're watching this on replay I'll come back and answer any but I hope that that was helpful I hope that it's inspired you a little bit to um, try and develop your own psychic gifts and try and trust yourself more um, thank you so much for everyone that has tuned in I am um, personally have just started so I've been doing card readings for my one-on-one -on -one business mentoring uh, clients uh, always but I've just started doing them for um, random people that I don't know and that is super super scary for me um, and I haven't released it as an offering yet because I don't really know what they are what they are yet I'm I think that they're like a clarity tarot session and to help you gain clarity on things but I need to do a, a few more there are a few people that I offered them to as a gift and once I figured out exactly what they are, I'll let you know. And I would love it, um, yeah, if it, you'd let me read you as well. Oh, thank you so much, Carly, for jumping on. <laughs> thank you so much, um, Kasha. Thank you for all your knowledge and for everyone else that I've learned things from. 
Um, as I mentioned at the beginning in Lindy Jewell's intuition workshop, the beautiful Kasha Berg from Liberato, I learned so much from that. Um, Maria Portez, I've learned lots from her. So if you want to follow some amazing people, learned a lot from Amanda Nicole too, um, who I think would be one to absolutely um, back up that your gifts can can very, very quickly grow. If you look at where she was a year ago, I'm sure she would tell you yeah, how quickly you can you can grow your psychic gifts. Um, I've been drawn to number time 711 for years. Would this be a message? I definitely think so. And it's just figuring out, Kylie, um, what exactly that message is for you. So I don't know if it's, it could be as sometimes people say, there are, you can Google it, right? And there are so many things that come up. But for a lot of people that I know, number messages might be uh, just an, you know, a message that you're on the right track or just a message that someone is there. Um, it could be any number of things. I absolutely think if that's a number that you see, it's definitely a message, but you just got to figure out what that message means to you. Um, Kat, oh, absolutely. Kelly, thank you for sharing. I'd love to have her. Oh, that is so nice. Thank you, Kelly. I'll let you know once I've figured my life out and know actually what they are. Um, Amanda Nicole, yes, your psychic gifts can grow very quickly using trust. Um, and Amanda, I'd like to thank you as well because you are one of the person actually that pushed me to um, start offering it. Um, yeah, as a an offering. So we'll see how that goes. Thank you so much, Kelly. I've done a few um, yeah gift gift um, readings and they've been going really well so far. So I've been really excited. Um, and thank you for everyone that I've learned things from as well along the way. Everybody, um, everybody that's here. And um, yeah, I think I've mentioned you all like probably quite a few times. I love to name drop. I hope you have an amazing night. And those of you that are in Melbourne, I hope that you stay safe. It's super windy out there. Thank you, June. I'd love, oh, thank you, Kylie. That's so nice. We all need a little push at times, definitely. I need to hear that knocking. Um, <laughs> to let me know I actually did you know that's quite funny I actually did hear that knocking when that's what I've been turning over in my head and heard that knocking in my dream saying come on take that step forward Kerry thank you love this group super keen to enhance some abilities wouldn't mind every oh wow thanks Kerry that's so cool amazing definitely um I will upload now the little graphic in the group and feel free to share your experiences with um yeah growing your psychic gifts and letting letting me know if any of this stuff has been working for you um have a great night lovely ladies and um yeah we'll see you soon hopefully i think the end of the month amanda might be doing a workshop if not early july um there's another one coming up which i haven't asked her to do yet but i'll get i'll get onto that thanks see you later guys